Hey, I'm Sarah. This is the third and final part of my testing series. In this video, I'll go over my Jetpack Compose test and also revisit some of my code from my previous videos. Compose support for JUnit 5 is currently in development. To give it a try, first you need to add the Sunatype Snapshots repo to your repositories, so you can just add this URL here. There's quite a few dependencies. I add support for JUnit 5. I add Android support for JUnit 5. I'm also adding JUnit 4. I add coroutine support, mock K, turbine. And this is my shared test module that I went over in my previous video. I add the compose dependencies. I add the compose snapshot. And finally, I add Hilt. And then for Hilt, I also set up a custom test runner. Then, back in my Gradle file, I add the custom test runner, and I can still connect JUnit 5 to the runner. For my Compose test, I start off with some isolation tests. This test verifies my home screen content composable. To test with JUnit 5, use Create Compose Extension. So here you just register your, your extension, and you call Create Compose Extension. To test my composable, first I use the JUnit 5 extension to run a compose test and set the content. So it's a little bit different than the JUnit 4 compose rule. So you call your extension dot run compose test, and then you set your content inside. Next, I set up my states. Here I want this to mock a brand new user accessing the app for the first time. So within set content, I can still get my window size. I set up my home state, my app layout info, and my sign-in state. Then I pass the states to my composable, leaving the click events null. And finally, I get my string resource, then use on node with text to make sure that my sign up button displays. So here I'm creating my assertion. I do something similar to test my signed out state only this time, I set my home UI state to include a signed out user. So here, I go ahead and give it a signed out user. And let's see what this test looks like. These tests run great. In this scenario, I'm not including my app's theme, so the composables load with default settings. This is fine because I'm only testing the button text with these tests. Next, I wanted to test my sign-in states with my home route, which accepts the view model as a parameter. To create a reusable function, I created an extension function that calls setContent, uses my app's theme, and creates my home route. So within the compose context, I create my extension function and I pass the home view model, my user repo, and a snack bar host state. And then I actually call set content here and I set up my default values. In this test, I can also confirm that a snack bar is shown for a user that's not authenticated. First, I save the snack bar host state. So I do that here. Then later, I can get the current snack bar data and validate the message. So I wait until my view model is current user not authenticated. And then I create my assertion. And then I wait again till the user message is not null. And finally, I get the snack bar message. There's a really cool feature with Compose testing that allows you to save screenshots. In my signed in state test, I create a bitmap of my home screen. So on root, Capture to image as Android bitmap. And let's go ahead and run this test and see what it looks like. The test prints out the screenshot path in the logs. To open your screenshot, go to Device Explorer, navigate to the path indicated in the log, and find your PNG file. Then just double click to open it right within inside Android Studio. 
And finally, just a few more things to mention about this test before I move on. First, this test is scope as per class. Then I create a custom test scope that I use for my data store. So I create that here. And finally, after every class, I call scope.runTest and clear the data store. Then I call scope.cancel to cancel the scope. You can only have one data store instance when running your test, and both of these steps are crucial when you want to run all tests together in one shot. Otherwise, you'll get an error that there's multiple data store instances open. For my compose test, I also wanted to do an end-to-end -end test where I launch the home screen, click the city search button, and then actually perform the search. My app uses HILT for dependency injection, and HILT doesn't support JUnit 5 out of the box, so for this test, I switched over to JUnit 4. To get started, I set up all of my test HILT modules, and for my APIs, I just provide my mock case buys. So for each service, I set it up and then provide the SPI for it. In my test, I create the HILT role, so I create that here. I create the Android Compose role here. Then I inject everything that I need to manipulate in my test. And before each test, I call HILT role dot inject and define the mock K mocks for my API services here. And just to note that while Hilt is providing me singletons for the most part, this test is not scoped per class. So that means that everything that's created will be recreated for each individual test in the entire test class. Which means that after each test and not after class, I need to clear my data store scope so I don't have issues when I run all of the tests together. Once everything was set up, the actual test was really easy. I set my last onboarding screen to two, which takes me right to my home screen. Then I find the city search button and perform a click. Once I'm on the search screen, I use perform text input to enter my city name prefix. And here's where things got pretty interesting. When a user enters a city name prefix, this is captured as a search as you type flow with a deep bounce of 300 milliseconds. By adding some logging, I can see that it takes about 400 milliseconds to run my code, plus 300 milliseconds for the debounce time. I can also verify that I'm running the same scheduler in both my test and my search view model. So here's the test context and the scheduler. And then this is inside my view model, and you can see the test scheduler here. Because of the flow debounce delay, I need to manually move my compose test forward. If I print out testscheduler.currentTime before I advance, I can see that I start at zero. So my time before is zero here. Then I call advance until idle. And when I print out the time again, I can see that now I'm at 300, and which is my debounce time. And that's pretty cool. So the time after is 300. And that's really all I needed to do to get my mock city search results from KTOR mock client. With my cities loaded, now I can make sure that the first material three card displays the city info. So I do my assertion here at the end. On the compose side, there may be times when you'd like to slow the test down so you can see what's happening on your device, or maybe you need to wait for a navigation event. Here, I call wait until timeout, which is just a helper function that starts an async timer and waits for the time that you've supplied. So let's go ahead and see what this test looks like. Very cool. In this end-to-end -end test, you can see that my entire app is loaded, including the background. Only this time, it's using my mock K dependencies and my test data store. This is great because there's no need to keep the KTOR API running in IntelliJ, and I never actually hit the real API. 
So now I've created an entire test suite of Android tests and unit tests. So how can I run all these tests at once? To run all of your Android tests together, right click on your app, then click run all tests. And let's go ahead and see what that looks like. This looks great. Man, did it make me happy to see so many green check marks after all of that work. But then I ran my test again and two failed in my home view model tests. So I had two failures here and I didn't change anything. This was the same exact code. And I tried to run it again and this time only one failed here. So what the heck was going on? I think the biggest issue with my home view model test was my choice of test dispatchers. When my home view model loads, it goes through three key states, the initial state, then it loads the user from the data store. And finally, it loads the apps that belong to the user. Standard test dispatchers are queued to a scheduler. So with this type of functionality, you can get more control, order, and predictability in your tests. So here you have more of an ordered flow. Unconfined test dispatchers run immediately, but they don't guarantee that each coroutine will run to completion eagerly too. If a new coroutine has a delay, others will keep running. Here, there's a lot less control over execution order, and this can lead to randomness and unpredictability, especially, running, especially when you're running all of your tests together. Unconfined dispatchers work great for all of my compose tests. Here, my coroutines launch immediately, and I can easily call home UI state value with no issues. But collecting this hot flow directly from the view model was a whole different story. In this scenario, with an unconfined dispatcher, who finishes first? Which state is actually coming back? Will it be the same every time? Can it handle concurrency when I run all of my tests at once? I believe this is why my tests were randomly failing, especially when I ran all of my tests together. With a bit of refactoring and code cleanup, here's what I did to make things work. First, I set everything up with a standard test dispatcher. Next, I make sure to clear my data store instance when the entire test class is finished. And before each test, I set up my KTOR mock client responses with mock case CO every. I also instantiate the view model to start with a new instance each time for each test. And finally, I use Turbine to collect my states. So here I await for my initial state, I wait for the user, I wait for the apps, and then I simulate a click, which is to add a blank app, and then I wait for that item to come back. And then finally, I can make my assertions. And with these changes, my tests succeed every time. That's pretty much it for my Android tests. And finally, to run all of your unit tests together, just right click on the test package, then click run tests in. You can easily run these tests from the drop down or click edit configurations to change the name of your tests. Testing isn't always easy, especially when it comes to testing flows and coroutines, but it's definitely worth the effort when you see a list of green checks and you know that you can be confident in your app when you're ready to release it. This not only wraps up my testing series, but this is also the last video that I'll do for my City app. I've had a lot of fun and I've really learned a lot throughout this journey. Now it's time to move on to my next project. I'll be posting my progress from start to finished. Stay tuned for more Android development and thanks for watching.